Good morning everybody. I am in the process of processing a whole lot of broccoli for the freezer and in the meantime or in the at the same time I'm going to make a broccoli salad because I have so much broccoli right now and I love a good broccoli salad. Um, most broccoli salad recipes that you see call for bacon and the dressing is usually got some sugar in it and I just have zero interest in that. Um, I mean, I like the bacon, bacon's good. Um, and I'm actually gonna use this, which is pancetta, um, instead of bacon today for this particular recipe. Um, but yeah, I don't need a lot of sugar in a salad. Um, and this is, this recipe is a Cook's Illustrator recipe that I'm using, but it's also loosely based on um, our local Albertsons Deli used to have a really good broccoli salad. Let's see, I need about a pound and a half here. And this is a mix of broccoli that I already cut up for a different project. And then um, these are Chinese broccoli that have been in my fridge now for probably a couple of weeks. It's amazing how long this stuff holds. And so this will be a nice way to use a lot of this up. I need a pound and a half, give or take. Good enough, okay. Um, yeah, so most broccoli recipes, a lot of sugar, which is just yuck. Um, way too much mayonnaise, very gloppy. Um, and then um, they usually use raw broccoli. And I like broccoli that's been blanched. I like it just slightly cooked in a broccoli salad. I'm not really a fan of raw broccoli in a salad. And this, since I was blanching, I'm going to blanch all of this broccoli to freeze anyway, it was a perfect time to do um, blanching for the salad at the same time. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll process the rest of this and freeze it. Um, we're doing lots of freezer stuff today. Okay, so here's our Chinese broccoli. Um, the stem on this is very edible, it's nice and tender. Um, if I want to be a little more fancy, I can cut it at a bit of a diagonal, just so visually it has a little more appeal. Um, certainly not necessary, but adds a nice touch. Bite-sized pieces. Uh, I'm gonna, even though the leaves are edible, they're probably just gonna sog out in this, and so I am gonna mostly tear the leaves off, although I'm not, if there are a few in there, I'm not worried about it. And as I said, the stuff in this bag right here is actually from the broccoli cheddar soup that we made a couple of nights ago. And that was the leftovers because that head of broccoli was easily two pounds and it was just way too much um, for that particular recipe. And so I just threw the rest in the fridge knowing that I would make this later in the week, which is what's happening. So, okay. So blanching is when you um, put your vegetable in boiling water for a very brief period of time. Um, and it stops any kind of 
enzymatic reactions that are happening within the cells of the plant and helps it um, remain very tasty if you're freezing it. All right, conveniently my camera died in the middle of that. So let's try this again, broccoli salad. Uh, we are going to crisp up this pancetta. Um, it recipe calls for six ounces of prosciutto. Um, I'm using pancetta because I couldn't find prosciutto at my grocery store. You could also use um, just bacon, so six ounces of bacon um, would work just fine. Or if you wanted to keep this vegetarian, you could just leave this out. Certainly not necessary. But I am going to crisp this up in this skillet under quite low heat so it doesn't burn. And I'll look up the difference between pancetta and bacon. I can't remember right off the top of my head the difference. Um, pancetta is obviously Italian, but it's essentially a type of bacon. Our water is coming back to a boil here. We're gonna need a big bowl. We're gonna need a colander. And I might as well make the dressing while I'm waiting for that to come back to heat. So, I need a half a cup of mayonnaise. So half a cup of mayonnaise. I know there are people out there who just are not mayonnaise eaters. I have always been the opposite. I love mayonnaise. And all mayonnaise is, is eggs and oil and a little bit of acid, usually lemon juice, um, that are emulsified together. You can make your own, especially if you have an immersion blender, quite easily. Um, there's a, I'll put a link below to it, Serious Eats has a two-minute homemade mayonnaise recipe by Kenji Lopez Alt that is quite good. I did just recently see a fun video on mayonnaise that was a little bit fermented. So they were adding um, like the juice from fermented cabbage or other fermented products to extend the shelf life. Um, homemade mayonnaise will only last in the fridge for about a week or so um, because of the raw egg that's in it. But um, this recipe uses some fermentation to extend the shelf life and they said it added um, it would last up to a month interesting not sure if i'm keen to try it but cool idea um i also just like plain old real mayonnaise out of a container so best foods which is hellman's i believe in the southern part of the country or the eastern part of the country same brand different name go figure Okay, so mayo, a tablespoon of balsamic vinaigrette or balsamic vinegar. Uh, this is a classic Cook's Illustrated recipe where they say salt and pepper and then they don't say in the ingredients how much to add. That's so annoying. I don't know why they do that. They just tell me in the listing. Uh, half teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon pepper. And that's pretty typical a lot of times when you see salt and pepper in something. There'll be half as much pepper as salt um, if they don't indicate how much salt and pepper to add and they just say to taste. I will typically start with twice as much salt as pepper. This is uh, Redmond's Real Salt, so slightly pink because it's got some extra minerals in it. Um, and it tends to be a little chunky, so I like to run it through my fingers to get the chunks out there. And I could do fresh ground black pepper, but this is convenient, so I'm just gonna do pre-ground. And then the other thing we need is a minced shallot. Shallots are related to onions and garlic. Um, it's a basically if sh they're their own thing, but it's almost as if onions and garlic had a baby. So they're strong like a garlic, but not quite as strong as garlic. Um, and so you typically see them used in salads, in vinaigrettes, and often um, a lot less than you would use a regular onion 
but a little bit more than if you were using garlic. So that kind of gives you an idea. Um, they're a little fiddly to peel. And I always love how they just say a shallot and they're like all over the place in size at the grocery store. And it's like, well, big shallot, little shallot, give me some idea of volume when it's chopped. Give me some help here. Um, but I don't think you can, I mean, they're tasty. I'm not too worried about overpowering the dish. And they're just like slicing onions, um, but you generally want them to be pretty fine, and so a lot of narrow, small cuts is usually the way to go. And honestly, sometimes a small knife is easier, which is what I'm going to switch to here. And I can just run my blade through this on the cutting board once it's chopped as well to give it a finer dice. Again, a little more like garlic in that you don't necessarily want a great big huge chunk of shallot. So finer dice is definitely the way to go. I grow shallots every year and um, you start them from seed just like you would an onion. Um, you can also buy them from sets. My experience from sets is they always, always flower if you grow them from sets. So I did that for a couple of years. The flavor was never great um, and I was always cutting off this giant flower stalk and then there was this hard chunk in the middle of the shallot that never dried well and so I would get a lot of mold and I finally just stopped and started doing them from seed instead because um, the problem is onions and shallots are biannual, which means that they send up a seed stock on the second year. Um, so the first year is all about the bulb growth and then the second year is all about the flower. And when you buy a set, it's that plant thinks it's been through a first year of growth already. And so it's almost impossible to get onion sets to not go to seed. Um, so I just quit growing them because it was a waste of time um, because nothing I grew from them stored well. Um, so now I grow shallots from seed um, along with my onions and I start them the same time I start my tomatoes. So about eight weeks before my last frost date. Uh, and they have a lot of root on them and so I use um, plastic shoe boxes, inexpensive plastic shoe boxes from a big box store and I just drill some holes in the bottom and then fill that with dirt and start my seeds and that way there's lots of room for the roots. Um, it also is really nice because they don't quickly dry out. And so as the weather starts to warm up and the greenhouse starts to warm up, it's really easy to accidentally dry out a flat of onions if they're in shallow trays, but it's much harder to do when they're in a, a shoe box. So I do love that way of growing them. Um, and then I plant them out when I plant my tomatoes out, which for me is kind of early to mid-May. And they come in, they're usually ready, I want to say late August. Um, and I get a beautiful crop of shallots every year. This is a lot of shallot. They didn't indicate how much. I'm just going to go for it. It's probably, you know, go by your tolerance for oniony things. Um, I think I probably could have used about half that and it would have been just fine. But I'm going to stir this together. It sounds like my water is boiling for blanching. And I think I had started to say before my battery died that I like to blanch my um, broccoli in my broccoli salad. I don't like it completely raw. I like having a little bit of uh, cooked tenderness there, but just two minutes. So we're doing a very quick blanch here. Um, so here, and again, this is a pound and a half of chopped broccoli and Chinese broccoli. And I'm gonna blanch this for two minutes. Let's see my bacon over there. 
My pancetta is just starting to cook. My heat's on very low because I knew I was going to be distracted by other things. And it was okay if it took its time, but I didn't want to burn it. Let's give this a quick stir. Make sure everybody is in the swimming pool. All right, and now we're gonna start our timer. Two minutes. We'll give this a quick stir. Maybe turn the heat up just slightly. And I wanna crisp this up just like you would crisp up bacon, basically. Okay, so our timer's gone off. Our broccoli is blanched. And we wanna, whew, that's hot. We wanna drain this and cool it off as quickly as we can because we really don't want it to overcook. And so I'm just gonna run cold water on this initially just to get that heat off of there really quickly. Is left. I'm run some cold water in there and put some ice in that. Ice flying everywhere. The other thing that blanching does is it really sets the color. And so you get this beautiful green that you just don't get if your broccoli is raw. So it's a nice additional benefit there. I'm just letting that water get nice and cold. And that's it on that. I think we're just gonna let that drain. broccoli coming later. Turn the heat up on this again. Get this crisp up. So we also need a half a cup of cranberries. They suggest soaking the cranberries. I don't really think that's necessary. I'm not gonna do that. They'll plump up in the dressing. And even if they don't, they're fine. I like eating them without that. As you guys know, I keep my nuts in the freezer so that they're not going off if I'm not eating them fast enough because I hate a rancid nut. Sorry, trying to find my half cup measuring cup, which I think is in the dishwasher. So we will use a quarter cup. I'll just do it twice. So 
I need a half a cup of toasted almond slivers. And you could use any kind of almonds you like on this, and you could even use whole almonds and then just chop them. It doesn't have to be these. Whatever you've got on hand is fine. Oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Another couple minutes and we'll be done with that. And again, half a cup of dried cranberries. You could also use dried cherries in this would be very good. Um, really whatever fruit you want. Raisins is somewhat traditional. I am not a raisin girl, so I would not use raisins. Um, but if you love raisins, raisins is very good in broccoli salad. Um, alternative to almonds, I've had broccoli salad with um, sunflower seeds and really loved it. So that would be also very tasty. Um, whatever nut you like, don't feel like you have to do almonds. Whatever you have hand on, on hand that's tasty. Um, pumpkin seeds or pepitas would also be very good here. Um, I'm just breaking up the chunky bits that are stuck together here. I think these are probably... Might just, just give this a quick spin. Just to make sure it's dry. Goodness, excuse you. Yeah, we got a little bit of water out of there. That was probably worth doing. Okay. So here's our broccoli. These are just about perfect. Maybe another minute or two. Mmm, that smells good. Now I'm just gonna line. this. Yeah, I think that's probably about where we want to be. The one thing I don't like about cast iron is it is so heavy. I would love to be able to just pick this up and dump it out and I, there's just no way. Like I can't, I can't scrape with one hand and hold the pan with the other. <clears throat> and those old grandmas of ours that used to be able to do that, man, they were strong. You know, you hear the classic story of somebody hitting somebody over the head with a cast iron skillet. That's not an easy thing to do. They're heavy. You gotta have some serious weight chops to be able to do that or strength. Alright, we're gonna let this sit and drain for a minute. I'm sure we can add our dressing here. Yep, okay. And I've made a thousand variations of broccoli salad over the years. Um, I really like cruciferous vegetables this way. Sometimes I just chop up broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage and um, kohlrabi and throw it all in the same uh, mix and do it that way um, and just unceremoniously throw some onions and some mayonnaise on it and call it good. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can go. A little squeeze of acid of some kind is a good idea. This has balsamic in it, but you could also use lemon juice or lime juice. But having that little tang in there is probably essential. Um, and you could put a little honey or sugar in here if you really wanted to. I'm going to leave it out. I think there's going to be plenty of sweetness 
without that. Our almonds are just slightly toasted. They're hot, but they're gonna cool down real fast when they hit this, so I'm not too worried about just throwing them in there. And this should be ready. Just stir everything together. Oh, this looks really good, you guys. That little bit of saltiness from that um, pancetta is gonna be a lovely contrast with all that green. Let's see. to get a little bit of everything on here. Mm. Yep, that's really good. It needs to sit for a bit. The um, shallots are a little strong. You can't really get kind of clobbered over the head with them, but it's just because they're fresh. It'll mellow as it sits. But there you have it. Um, one of many possible variations of a broccoli salad. Um, this one made with cranberries, almonds, shallots, um, mayo, a little bit of balsamic, um, and some salt and pepper. Pretty simple, but a delightful summer salad.